You're such an asshole! Yo, Captain here. <clears throat> Young man writes, read the request below out loud. Reading the request below out loud will take 2.5 minutes. It does not require looking at other material, although there is one YouTube link. My request is for a YouTube publication. The Bureau of Labor Statistics Occupational Outlook Handbook was updated late October. The projected job growth for jobs in the transportation and material moving category for the reference time frame through December 2026 is as fast as average for the most part. I am not pretend, pretending that these predictions are divinely protected. Uh, I am really only assuming that the Department of Labor is well resourced better than most organizations to put together these predictions. Actually, I did a video exactly on this topic because people are saying like, well, wait a minute, nobody should go into engineering because even though they make you know, $87,000 median income and have highest starting salaries, the projected job growth is only going to be 2%. And a guy actually went through and said, and he did the math. He says, we shouldn't be going, oh my God, you shouldn't. Well, then I did the research and I found out that the Bureau of Labor Statistics is horrible at predict predicting and forecasting job growth in, in different industries. And there's even a chart up there, uh, look it up, I did a video on it where it's, it's obvious that these projections are completely worthless. And my argument was is I would not worry about job growth forecasts put out by the Bureau of Labor Statistics because they're, they're worthless. They're completely worthless. They should just stop is what they should do. And what I would do is look at what the millions of people engaged in billions of transactions every day tell you in the culmination and the ultimate final number boiling down to salary data. That's going to tell you what's in demand. Maybe not what's going to be in demand 10 years from now, but at least that's what's in demand now. And heaven help you if you're going to major in something stupid in the future. <clears throat> All right. This is a quote from the, three, from the book, Three Minute Therapy, a very solid, very standard book on the application of cognitive therapy written by a well-established therapist and has received hundreds of reviews. In low to average paying jobs, it is steadily reliably, it's steady rely, let me read this again. In low to average paying jobs, it's steady reliability that most impresses supervisors. For example, there are always jobs available to people with a clean driver's license, little driving experience, and a smidgen of presentability. Um, yes, that's true. Um, when I've talked about security, People say, how do we get into security? Uh, don't be on dope, don't be drunk, clean shaven, no tattoos, no piercings. You're in shape, preferably got a carry concealed permit. I'll help you get armed security work and you show the fuck up on time. It's, I mean, you, your, your competition is not that high. It's not that high. I remember working for some really low grade security firms and they kept calling me in because somebody wouldn't show up to work and I'd have to go run. I remember that's the time I worked 42 hours straight once. And that wasn't fun. And the guy, freaking supervisor comes in. Hey, your hair is getting a little long. You know, we run a professional organization. Here's like this wannabe cop with the mustache. And this is funny. He got busted for trying to pull over and arrest somebody using the security car. Had all those little yellow lights. You know, he actually pulled over somebody for like speeding or something like that. <laughs> He's the one that got arrested. Oh, and then they found out he wasn't driving with the driver's license. That was a fucking supervisor, right? Security is not this high. Look, if you, if you want to work just a little bit hard, at hit the gym, get a carry conceal, clean up. Um, hey, take a couple classes, get some specialized training, uh, take martial arts, and you go in, and you show that to a guy, and you show the fuck up on time, you're not going to start at the rookie level. You might start rookie shifts, but you're going to be like, yeah, this guy's got his shit together. Let's send him, you know, to something a little bit more serious. <sighs> I don't care. This is a YouTube link on Jordan Peterson's advice for people with depression. Feel free to listen to the first two m minutes. People without jobs are in serious trouble when it comes to coping with and getting out of depression due to the stubborn disorganization of their lives. Yes, I listened to it and you said something like, people who suffer, not crippling, unrecoverable depression people without jobs people without friends people who don't work out I think and then you had one other mental issue it was almost impossible to recover if you suffered from those four things so yes you do have to get out and work 
Absolutely. Even if it is, uh, security work late at night is a little, that's, I wouldn't recommend that to cure your depression because there's no one around. I'd almost say you should go work in a mall as a mall cop, which would fucking suck, but at least you're talking to people and there's sun out. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting link that he said. To a great extent, American workers, particularly men, have sought work as drivers in one capacity or another with the devastation of the manufacturing sector. These people may not always be the brightest, but they are generally well-intended, hardworking, patriotic, and resourceful. And frequently, with precious few other options, and frequently, with, he, he writes horribly. I'm terribly sorry, dude. You do. You've got a, this went nowhere. And frequently, with precious few other options. And there has been increasing discussion over the last couple of years about the eventual automation, auto, automation of sizable parts of this job category. It is absurd to think that expertise in automation, IT, and robotics will provide jobs for these millions. I also have trouble imagining some type of stable, guaranteed minimum income coming online for these millions. I recall le reading that in the last decade, claims for social security disability income have already spiked. Oh yeah, the, the dis everyone's disabled. Oh, I got the bipolars, I'm disabled. The typical SSDI amount is in the range of 13,000 per year and the recipient receives Medicare in addition to that eventually. It is just that receiving a disability income under the age of 50 can easily be degrading, especially for men. Yeah, you should be a shit. I remember I was teaching ballroom dance class and this girl comes in and she was talking about how she's on uh, disability at like 19. And she was taking a dance class. Like, how the fuck are you here? Get your fucking lying cunty ass out of here, you goddamn parasite. Um, but I guess enjoy the decline. You know, I mean, if if they're going to pay it and they're going to give you, and you got no better option, like you keep applying for jobs and like, oh, we can't hire you. Oh, here's the job. Oh, we, we have to rescind the job offer because we're HR bitches. Uh, I could see that you would have, like, as long as you're trying, after a while, it's just like, yeah, fuck it. Oh, yeah, I got the bipolars and I'm an alcoholic. Give me the fucking disability. <clears throat> that means I fear that this type of stubborn disorganization risks becoming more of an epidemic in the United States workforce, a former workforce. Force. Detroit is the current clearest example. We are risking, in some ways, an entire nation like this, whether it be 10 years or 30 years. And I use the category of driver because for someone without other skills or assets, getting a CDL is frequently a useful stopgap option, and that is at risk of, slowly, of being slowly withdrawn. And what this spells for the broader economy in the years and decades ahead is potentially catastrophic. Because everyone will be impacted even more by even more violent crime and even higher taxes. The rate of international homicide in the United States is triple what it is in Canada. Do you think this perspective is valid? What feedback do you have? Do you think there is a greater need to become a prepper? Well, you should always be a prepper. Because it could be a meteor right not politics that causes a great need to be a prepper. Uh, your perspective is somewhat correct. Um... And it is true as long as we have the welfare state. Because what I think is happening, and I'm not sure we're approaching a singularity, but as things become more automated, we need less and less humans to keep this economy going. And in a pure capitalist free market, do or die, sink or swim, you would either work a job that helps support your family or not. And if there are not enough jobs to help support a family, then guess what? You don't fucking breed. All right? You just don't fucking breed. So the population would start to go down. GDP and income per capita would start to go up because the economy, the self-supporting economy, would largely be, in theory, programmers of robots and maintainers of robots <laughs> to theoretically do everything. And you don't need a lot of humans to have a bunch of robots, you know, uh, taking care of them. But if you're spinning out more and more kids than what there are going to be jobs because of automation and streamlining, well, then you're going to need a basic guaranteed income. You're going to have to tax people that are productive to give to people that spit out more kids than they can afford. Um, <clears throat> but in my perfect world, you know, a lot of people say, you just want to kill the poor. It's like, no, no, no. I just don't want them to breed anymore. That's why, that's why I'm saying. I don't want to kill anyone. I don't want, but we should let people suffer the full costs and consequences of their mistakes. So if they have a kid that they can't afford, we shouldn't bail them out. They got to suffer. They got to strive. They got to struggle. And they make damn sure that they don't have another kid. Right? And then, oh, they only have one more kid. That one kid remembers what it's like being poor. And that kid makes sure that he or she goes off to engineering school and becomes a, you know, one, not the poor part. We now, oh, you had a kid. Here's some more money. Oh, you had another Here's some more money. And just spit out. Uh, so in actuality, the poorer people breed more than the, than the not even rich, just the self-supporting and rich uh, people. Um... So since we, we love democracy so much and we can't wait to bail people out of their mistakes and pay people to have illegitimate bastard or un, unaffordable children, 
Uh, yeah, that's gonna that you're gonna have uh, more people than there are jobs, and uh, and you know jobs like yeah try, the the jobs that are a great stopgap or a, a stepping measure to get into something else or just a a good uh, even trade. Some of those will be going you know accounting I think not the CPAs but I think your bookkeeping yeah that's gonna be replaced by software, and you can make good money as a, as a bookkeeper back in the day not today. Um, truck drivers yeah that goes automated that's gonna go away. Uh, Uber, although that kind of opened up a whole new employment for a lot of people. No, I could see it where a lot of these in-between jobs that would help someone live a pretty good life or even get up to the upper income classes. Um, a lot of those, anything that will be automated away will be automated away. Kiosks, oh, you want to, well, oh, start mopping floors at McDonald's. Like, no, we got a Zumba robot that does it, and there's a kiosk taking people's orders. So, I mean, yeah, if, if you want it... <coughs> If you want to keep having kids that you couldn't afford in the first place, and don't be bitching and whining, oh, I can't find a job. Well, maybe you shouldn't have had the kids who wouldn't then be bitching and whining about that they can't find jobs. Maybe instead of, I can't find jobs, it's the evil rich people. Hey, how about, hey, parents, why the fuck did you bring me into this world if you weren't going to raise me right, train me right, tell me about the real world? And you, well, they didn't know. They, those type of people don't think too smart far ahead. They realize that there'd be this roboticized economy, and then it's crippling. Now we need a basic guaranteed income. But yeah, some of your concerns are valid. Yes, they are. All right, that's it. Cappy's got to go do more asshole consulting. We'll see you guys later. Bye.